very few people have the relationship that you and I have, and I want to continue to proclaim it to the world about what we've got. Show them the guns, show. show. Oh, dude, your biceps popping, girl. Yeah, I need a bag, bro. Send it through quickly. I'm making his dog like I'm in a big lease. Yeah, I told him I'm ahead of the stands. I deserve another hundred bands. I deserve another hundred. Welcome to the Merry Game Podcast. We are the voice you trust when it comes to lust, and we are who you hire. When she lacks desire, Jesse Joy, our hello. favorite hawk, is yeah. saying hello. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> A fail. <laughs> well, whirlwind last couple of days. I had one of my best friends come in, Dan Martell. He came in, and then he decided to say, hey, I got an extra seat on the private jet. You want to go with me? I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Let's go. So I went to Vegas. We had an amazing time. No alcohol, no weed, no shenanigans. I ate perfectly on my uh, plan with my coach, and I'm feeling on fire That's today. That's hard. I, I like know. to have a drink or two. But I've been ruined. Good. I have. That's been, a good thing. I, it is. Not I, ruined. <gasps> what? You've been elevated. Oh. Wow. Yes, Jesse Joy. <laughs> when you drive up to a private airport, and you hop out of a car and walk right onto a jet, get in, and you're hanging out with your buddy. Mm-hmm. No and, BS at all. And we're just giggling and we're eating these protein, egg and lentil protein chip snacks. They're phenomenal. Mm. And we're just talking business and everything for an hour to Vegas. And then you land and you jump right off. And then your driver's there and then you head right. It, it was just. Talk about utilize time dude buying back your time exactly yeah. um this is also a very special week for us because i you know even though dan's one of my very best friends he's also one of my business coaches mm -hmm. and uh we've hired a new assistant who's like literally rechanging and restructuring our life i'm obsessed with her already obsessed yeah um someone to just sit and organize our life and schedule did you see the refrigerator no. Everything is in perfect <gasps> order. All the labels are perfect. That's it. Oh. All the protein bars in the right bottom. And I go, hey, we don't have any more protein bars. She goes, check the top left drawer. Oh. There's like a gazillion boxes of the protein bars I love in yeah. there. Like every, it, it's just. I'm in love. I should have married her. <laughs> and you know what? Here's the crazy thing. It was not expensive to hire her at all. Mm -hmm. Um, And. I feel like I'm the latest person to the to the party. So do I. And it's shifted my entire paradigm of yep. how things work. Yep. Speaking of paradigms, I was on a one on one call before we jumped on here with one of our clients who recently came into our program and I had the biggest reframe that I wanted to share with you. Oh that I wanted your honest response mm -hmm. and real reaction here on the show. And it's simply this. I said, you know how and every guy, every guy watching this, every guy listening to this is going to like, we want our wives to be into us and into the act of when we're having sex. We love the moaning and the cooing and the scratching and all the, yeah. the fun, the playfulness, the enthusiasm yeah. during the act. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, we have that oh, exercise. Gosh. Yeah. Oh, gosh. He got look, close, he, actually. He, he's, he's looking at Valentine like a snack. Wow. One of the exercises we do, we do an exercise to help the man and the woman clean the slate mm -hmm. and, 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 and like basically clean the canvas to start over again. It's a really cool exercise, but basically what the exercise does is it allows the wife to understand that the man now gets it. Okay. The man understands it. And here in, in, in most men's situation, here's what's happening. We just want our wives to know, like, dude, we want to have sex because it makes us feel connected. It makes us feel loved. And we don't want it to seem like it's a chore to you. And I go, the same way your wife l exactly wants you to listen to her enthusiastically, answer enthusiastically, be present in the moment is the exact same way. But here's the shift and here's the, the paradigm mm -hmm. shift. And that is, I said... You know how we know our wife probably don't think about sex every day, all day, kind of like we do? Well, it's the same way you don't think about whatever the situation is she does every day, all day, like she does. But when you step into her world, she wants you to really care as if that shit's really important because it is important. 
But even below that is what we're communicating to each other. When you show up aggressively and enthusiastically in sex and I show up aggressively and enthusiastically in conversation, it's not that sex is important or not that conversation is important. It's, an, it's the enthusiasm it's about it. It's that you're important. Yes. Because if, if, if I go, hey, I really like it when we really get it on and we make out and we kiss and we have a good old, and I feel like that seventh grade thing like we do, mm -hmm. it makes me feel loved. And I go, bro, your wife is thinking the same thing as when she go when you're enthusiastic and aggressive and aggressive, like leaning in and, mm -hmm. and caring about. It doesn't just mean that, oh, you care about what she cares about. It means that you actually care about her. So this is, this totally. is, this is mind shifting. I feel like we've talked about things like this. Kind of, but the, the, the just the, the way he said it to the, you. Then no, the way I'm saying it to you. Okay. The, the the last link of it is, don't just conversate with your wife because she goes, "Wow, that was really cool. Thanks for being a good conversation." She doesn't doesn't give a fuck that you're a conversationalist. She cares that you care about what she cares about because it's it says, "I care about you." Mm -hmm. One hundred percent. We all want people to care about us, and I go, "You're seen." You're heard, mm -hmm. you're understood, you're celebrated. Mm -hmm. That's what that means. When all when we when we say I'm seen, I'm heard, I'm celebrated, what I'm saying is you must actually care about me. Because mm -hmm. when I call you and go, hey, remember when I would get up when Pete would call? Pete Vargas would call yeah. and I would get up and, and, and then you left that one he time. he calls late. <laughs> I know. He calls late, but that one yeah. time when you got up and you left after yeah. three minutes of me conversation, I realized, oh, shit, I, I made a mistake because I used to do this all the time before you left me. Yeah. And it's not that you didn't feel like a priority, even though that was the, the ver verbiage is you don't feel like a priority. Yeah. But it's ultimately, it's like, well, if I'm not a priority, then you must not actually care about me. Yeah. And I go, your wife knows that you're a good conversationalist. You know how she knows this? Because he's a big time golfer. Mm -hmm. I said, if you had three guys that you were golfing with and, and uh, 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 one of the professionals showed up as number four and he was going to jump in your cart you would be jumping into some deep conversations. You would be asking, you would be, yes. you would be so different because you care. It's something you care about. That goes along with the argument that we were talking about how I walked in the man cave and you were finishing up your texting, right? Yeah. And I said with tone, I didn't <laughs> think I had that much tone, but apparently I did. But I, and then I realized now why, why I said it that way is because I walked in, you're just sitting there. I'm like, yeah. And we had like a minute to, to do the call that we were going to do. And I'm yeah. like, aren't you going to yeah. set up or, or hello? You know, yeah. like I didn't want to miss the call. But the whole backstory was that as I didn't feel like a priority. Yeah. So ultimately, I don't feel like you care about me. Yeah. Because if that was anybody else walking in here, you would have everything set up. You'd be off your phone you, and you would welcome them with open arms. Yeah. Hello. What's up? Yeah. What's up? You ready? It's like you're nicer to strangers than you are the person you love the most. Yeah. Because it's easier. Right. Mm hmm. And so ultimately I didn't feel like a priority. Yeah. And when somebody doesn't feel like a priority, they it, ultimately it means you must not really love me. You must yeah. not really care. It's a so, sign. We looked for that sign that, well, you don't care about me. Well, then why am I here? Yeah, exactly. And it goes downward spiral like exactly. that. Exactly. But yeah. so that's the, that we've talked a lot about, hey, make them feel like a priority. Yeah. But why? Because you care. Because you and they know you care. Mm -hmm. You know how they say that you, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care? Have you ever oh, heard that statement? No, that's good. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. We all we all want to know if if the if it's really true that we're afraid of dying and we're afraid of being alone. Most people are afraid of being alone more than dying. Yeah. Because that's a miserable existence. Yeah. Well, if the person you're with doesn't really truly care about you, it's why it feels so lonely. And so when I'm making you a priority, but if I'm making you a priority, but it's a chore and you can tell it's a chore for me, your, your inner like go fuck yourself really pops up. Mm -hmm. Same thing if, if I know for, that feeling. Yeah. If you were if, you. like, if, if other than like, I love when you're super gentle and soft in our morning sex, like I, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, I just love that. But All if docile, yeah, you say. You know, feminine and yeah. just hanging out. But if if for some reason, if you didn't respond at all every time we had sex, which is like we call it like vaginal masturbation or like yeah. starfish sex or just whatever, starfish. it's um, that we're just going with. Do, do you not? Do, you clearly must not care about me, or oh wow, loving me must be a chore. Who the fuck wants to be 
uh, uh, somebody's chore. I know. They want to be so celebrated. It's, it's, I think, you know how you and I love to get like to the bluest flame possible? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, this is cool. This is cool. But this is the, the thing. This is why, yeah. I think we've d- hit on that mm-hmm. with this. And that is. Because you care. You want to care. And it's, it's, they have to know you care. They have to, or else, it, but they're not going to respond. It's like saying, like, oh, I love you, I love you. But it's like, do you feel loved? That's what yeah. you should be asking, right? Yeah. yeah. Or when or you how, say, I love you, I'm excited. How can I, how can I love you better? Or what? How, yeah. which way do you feel loved? Dude. It's like just those little reframes and all those things that would just s- s- make a relationship sore. 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 Like not, that not, hawk. Not sore like, ow, I'm sore, but like sore. Oh, sore through the sky, yeah. Sore through, like the, like the, like the hawks hawk. that, that circle the man cave. Um, it's so, it's, the questions you just asked are so simple. Mm-hmm. We should ask that question every week to each other. Think about that. How can I make you feel more loved this yeah. week? What if, if, if and I, I like that anyways, because it, instead of like, cause we have to say our logistics meeting, right. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of talking about our relationship too. Like, and instead of saying me, like you, you ask what, what did you do wrong? And I say, you didn't make me feel loved because, uh, you didn't cut the strawberries or you didn't get up or you were a little lazy. Right. The, instead of like me being negative about it, yeah. you ask, <laughs> You're smiling. At oh, because me. I, yeah, it's such a good segue. I know next one. Oh exactly. <laughs> you look at you, little it. segue. You, did you feel it? Mm-hmm. You good? Man. So instead of saying, <laughs> oh, and then you say, "Well, what would? How would you say that?" Which part? How, now you've thrown me off. Ah, uh, okay. I lost Rather it. than like, you know, me being negative, but how yeah. you? Uh, how can I make you feel loved? I yeah. would say, I would love if you invested your time more on helping with the kids. Yeah. I would say more positively than negatively yeah right exactly right yeah. now we're teammates yeah we're on the same team which is what we really wanted to talk about today exactly thank you for that segue yeah thank you for that segue jesse so in relationships it's easy to get negative hmm. or it's easy to be like god he never does this or like this this is happening again like i'm so frustrated right hmm. it's it's better to say, to think of you as not you out to get me or being negative. It's better to think of you as a teammate and on my side mm. and me asking you in a way of, I would love for you to help out with the kids more. Mm. Yeah. Or, Our, oh, go ahead. or it would make me feel really loved Yeah. if you proactively cut up the strawberries or did the yeah, thing. Proactively, yeah, proactively. Yeah, if exactly. you proactively did that. Yeah. So Aaron Hovivian, who we love, told me this thing a long time ago. And I have to remind myself, too, because I get frustrated. And I'm like, this again, right? Because hmm. things, the same things kind of pop up. Yeah. And he goes, if you're okay with reminding him the rest of your life, say a couple times a year, you're going to have to remind him. Hmm. And he'll gladly do it. Mm-hmm. And if that's the only thing, I just got to remind you, remember to remind you then are you okay with that? Can you live with that? I'm like, well, yeah, Mm. like we're human. You know, I think about it, but in the moment when I'm frustrated about something, I'm like, shit, I have to remind him. Yeah. It's hard to. I think what you're hitting on here, which is so powerful, and I think a really big break through for you and I this last week, uh, because we've had a a month of, you know, a lot of like just tiffs and just, you know, a little bit of, "Eh, fuck Mm -hmm. you, but I love you, but "Mm," yeah, like that kind of attitude which I think every couple totally understands. Mm-hmm. It's it's this, man, we're quick to forget we're on the same team. Yeah. And even if we're not, we don't f- forget, even if we don't forget that we're on the same team, sometimes we become Formula One teammates where we're in competition with one another. Mm-hmm. And like, pull your weight, motherfucker. Come on. We're, we're supposed to be a winning team as opposed to. That's exactly how it feels. Too. Well, that's how I act sometimes. I know. Because my mind, it, it, it's. And me to you. Yeah. 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 It's it's uh, rather than go. Dude, is, here here's how I think. Let me explain the concept because I think you did an amazing job. Let me hit it from another angle. Mm-hmm. And it's we're quick to say. 
what we don't like and what you're not doing. Yeah. But I think that's the easy way than saying, can you do this? Yeah. I would like this. Let me give an example. Yesterday we're jumping onto the, uh, we're jumping onto the jet and I go, uh, yo, we can take this picture or not? <laughs> Something like this. You it, did that? Yeah, to, to Dan, because we already oh, went in. Wow. We already went in. I'm like, yo, we, uh, and he goes, is that your passive aggressive way of saying you'd like me to come out and get a picture? I go, yeah, that's pretty much exactly what I was saying. Oh, and we're laughing shocking. and we're laughing and giggling, you know. Shocking that you did that. Yeah. Because you tell him, oh, you're going to ask me? Like, yeah. you're so big on that. <laughs> well, nobody's perfect. <laughs> but but that's what I'm saying. But yeah. that he reframed me. I was like, Thank you for doing that. I forgot. And then later in the the thing, he said something. I go, oh, really? Uh-huh. Tell me about it. He goes, fuck, dude. Like, yeah. So it's really easy to slip into. It's easy, too, when you're, like, in boss mode, right? Like, yeah. I more work at home, and I have the kids, and I'm like, hey, got this. Like, I'm just trying to plan everything. Yeah. And you, too. And yeah. when we get together, we're like, oh, can you da-da-da-da-da, you know, like this. Yeah. And you're like, whoa. But this this thing, like, okay, let's go back to the example. You walk in. We're about a minute late. Uh, on uh, getting ready for the show, I was in my DMs uh, answering some questions and basically telling people, hey, if you want your relationship better, like, let's go. Let's get, mm-hmm. you should have get off the pot. So you're you working. Ready? Yeah, I'm working. <laughs> and um, I'm working here. I'm working here. <laughs> and what you could have just said was so, I would have responded so differently in saying, if you would have said, Hey man, it doesn't really make me feel like a priority when you don't have everything set up because I know if other people set up, can, can I would have instantly go, shit, dude, you're right. Yeah. Which I ultimately hate, then I feel like you don't care I, about You don't me. care. And I go, I hate that I made you feel that way. Yeah. As opposed to the... The tone. Hey, why isn't everything set up? Yeah, what's the heck? Yeah. I think this is, I, I think this is really great for, you know, intimate relationships and like, partnerships life partnerships and spouse and stuff but isn't that just great leadership anywhere and everywhere mm-hmm. hey can you do this for but me? it's easier to do it with somebody else than your partner actually but the, here's what my mind goes okay well it's so simple it is what you and i are saying is not like wow that's calculus that's we're talking about two plus two equals four shit right seriously but very few people do it mm-hmm. so why i don't know i mean i was raised with my mother, who is like the queen of doing this, and with she's a great human and, being. But and this I is and just... she, I, I feel like she thinks, and maybe I feel this way too, that she thinks she's saying it with a joke, because mm. because sometimes she is funny, and then sometimes she says things too harsh. Mm. And I feel like if I, not at the time where I walked in the office and and toned you up to death, but <laughs> sometimes I feel like I'm saying it with a joke. Mm. And it's funny, but it sounds really bitchy. Yeah. So why am I doing that? Yeah. And I, I've been saying it to my mom, too. I'm like, can you ask? You know, like yeah. messing with her. Yeah. Uh, and she's like, whatever. Just go get it. I'm like, okay. Because it's my mom. Yeah. I know her. I don't care. It's whatever. Um, but that's how I feel like she does it. And I know I was raised that way totally. So. Here's why I think we don't do it. I'm like breaking the cycle. Yeah. It's hard. No shit. Yeah. Well, it'd be, it's literally a pattern. Yeah, you, you hear a pattern communication when you grow up, and that's how you hear it. I even hear jo- Jovi doing it. Yeah. So I must be doing it. Yeah. I gotta switch that. Yeah. Here's why I don't think we do it. Mm. It's way more vulnerable to ask for something that somebody mm. can say no to, than to passive aggressively almost manipulate them into doing it. Yeah. And totally. I don't know that w- I, we don't consciously know that we're doing it. But it's funny because if I asked you for something or I'm like, hey, I don't feel like a priority, you would gladly and lovingly change it. I would move heaven and earth. Yeah. Like so heaven why and don't earth. we people in general talk like that? Because I think it makes us feel weak and vulnerable. If I'm going to ask you something. I'd love to talk nice. I love <laughs> <laughs> I love not getting in tips. Why would I do that? You know? I know. <laughs> you know. I know. Well, this is this is the this is the conundrum. But so many people talk this way, act this way. Yeah. I think it's a, it might be a comfortability thing, too, because I, I don't think we would do this totally. to strangers. Totally. I, think I that's might what, tend to do it to a stranger more because I'm... I, yeah, I you're tend, a dick. I, well. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that um, when we're comfortable, like, sometimes I get frustrated at... I'm like, God, I have to talk like I'm on a show. 
yeah. all the time. Can I just talk to you real? Like I feel that way. Hmm. But if I did talk to you with my heart open, I know you would receive it better. Yeah, that is. But that's true. hard because I just get I come out with my, all my backstory of, oh, here he goes again. I don't feel like a priority, you know, mm. so. And you know what's interesting about that? Now that I'm just listening to you talk about this. Yeah. Oh, here he goes again. Yeah. What if we pause to consider that maybe you're the trigger that's cueing this whole thing or I'm the trigger that's cue. And when I talk to you that way, then you act this way. And I go, well, there he goes again. It's like, well, no, 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 you, you, you lit the match, motherfucker. Me, I did. Or me too. But yeah, if you go, oh, here he goes. Like, well, let's say you that's come how I felt. Yeah. When but, I walked in the office and things weren't set up, I'm like, here he goes again. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not the priority, but, but anybody else is. But you know what? What I'm noticing is like, w these are patterns we're learning sure. to break ourselves yeah. as a couple and as humans. would shock me if I fell into that pattern anytime soon from based on what we just learned yeah, it, and it's easier now that we're in a good space for me to remind you or, or show you be like oh this is one of those times you're like oh shit yeah well because now you you're now you're handling it with grace like because now I feel like you're on my team and you actually want me to yeah. win the other way I feel like you're almost like and this is an attitude that I think couples like get I into walk in with a sword like well Shh. Well, now another demerit to you. Yeah. See? Yeah. And it's Go almost like card. trying to prove, see, I'm better. That's I'm why better you're than sensitive you. to it. I love that we're like literally figuring it out together right now because yeah. you are hyper sensitive yeah. to me mostly telling you to do something. Yeah. Anything, um, basically. The, the, so that's how I you have feel. A, I have, when you say sensitive, I like to, me and Sarge use a term where we go, we have a, an allergic reaction. Oh my God. We have an, anytime, like, you know, a negative person, I have, an, I have an allergic reaction to negative people. I do everything in my power to make sure I never have negative people in my life. Hold so on. It sh okay. Well, just real quick. So like, when you come and tell me yeah. what to do, my allergic reaction is because like I've already, my brain is so trained that I don't do what anybody tells me to do. I do what I tell me to so do. So that's why I should ask you. But I'm, instead of but I'm also you. trained to like, I want to serve. Yeah. I'll, so if you go, hey, can you do this for me? Like, it would be an honor. Yeah. Hey, can you make sure that the place is set up totally? Because when I come in, if it's not set up, it makes me feel like I'm not that big of a priority. Yeah. But you know what? You not in the talent here. Like, you what are. the hell? No shit. You <laughs> should, they love you on the show more than they love Just me. Just kidding. But here's the thing. It takes you having to have a tremendous amount of awareness to be able to communicate what the fuck's actually going on. That's what I'm working on right and there. And me. All of us. That's why I think this is the answer why most people don't do it. People aren't even aware. They're so aware of other people and not they're not yes. people aren't very aware of themselves. I'm working on that. I had a call a couple of days ago and it was so easy. And this is how the podcast this is, we knew what we were going to talk about because it was so good. It was so easy for me to see what they were dealing with mm -hmm. and she was negative and um she'd be like and he doesn't do this and da 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 and and I was like why don't you ask him? I was like, because you're teammates. You're on the same team. And I know he would love to. He loves you so much. Mm -hmm. And she did. You know, she called me back and you know what she said? What? She said she like orgasmed like three times in a row. They snuck away from the kids. They did it like four times that week. Like it was really good. Wow. It was really connective. Mm -hmm. And he was like being romantic and did all the things that she just asked. Like a normal person. Just wow. asked for it. But she was very like negative and critical before. Wow. There he goes again, or he doesn't do this. He doesn't do shit for me, you know, like the way you think about it, the way you want to talk. All of us guys think that same way. Yeah, and then she just asked, and they had a great week. Wow, dude. Yeah, you so know, it was easy for me to see it for them. And you were talking about having awareness. Yeah. My awareness for me, I mean, I'm working on it, but it's not there all the time. Mm -hmm. So she was also saying that she was like, I don't know, it's the same routine, same sex, and it's just like whatever. I go, you know, last time I was kind of feeling that, I did recognize. I go, I asked you nicely. I go, you know, I kind of need some romance. Mm -hmm. And you were like, I'm on it. Let's go get yeah, it. I'm like, I want some of that Instead too. of me being bitchy towards you, I'm like, fuck, it's the same thing with you. Like, God, yeah. after this long, you know. 
Yeah. I just asked for what I needed. What did you do? Got a hotel, rose petals, sh- chocolate covered strawberries. We went out, had drinks. Like, it was great. We had great sex. Yeah. So all she asked for the romance and he delivered also. Wow, dude. So so yeah. the lesson for the ladies is ask for what you want because your and, man. And be aware of like when you feel lacking, what am I lacking? Okay. Well, I feel like I'm lacking something or I feel really bitchy and I kind of like am negative towards yeah. the person who I love. Yeah. You have to stop and be like, why am I bitchy? What do I feel like I'm lacking? Remember a you, date romance because well, you got to get clear on what the problem is We yeah. can solve any problem if we know it know what the actual yeah. problem is but now I'm trying to give them the steps to like when I feel that um, I'm bitchy or I'm like negative towards this person. What am I lacking then I yeah. then I, I can ask for it Yeah, well remember when we were on our hike and we we're at the top of the world and we're like, you know I, I don't really like social media. Yeah, and I, I'm really honest about like if if it feels awkward for me just to show how cool our life is, even though we have to show it in a way because it makes us credible. Like people go, well, shit, they really do have what they're talking about, and mm-hmm. I want that. And so it creates a gap in someone's mind. But we didn't want to just get on but social you, media. You do like social media if you're learning something or you hear something I inspiring. Love it. Yes. So that's the reframe for you right now. Again, you don't hate it. You, you love it for its learning aspects or free marketing or... I love the connectivity. And we reframed it in saying we want to give tips well, but and inspiration. Let me tell the story. Because first of all, you're very right. I do love social media. I've met some of my best friends on social media. Yeah. We have am- amazing clients that we've met through social media. So right. I do love it. It's a media. Mm-hmm. But... We're at the top of the, we're at the, we did the walk, the top the, of the world, top of the world. We did our hike, hike. Mm-hmm. and we wanted to show people like, this is cool stuff that we do, but I was sitting at the top of the hill and I'm like, I don't want to be like, check it, like check us out. Eh. Yeah. Like, because, and I told you then I was really vulnerable with you. I go, I'm not a panderer. I hate pandering for, I, I'm, I'm too powerful to pander. I've worked my ass off to not have to fucking pander to anyone. Mm-hmm. But here I am on social media pandering for <laughs> what? Likes? Yeah. It, like this is, it, so, I know I'm not like a big poster either. I don't yeah, really but like it. Was, it. I, I think selfies are hilarious. Like honestly taking a selfie. I, I haven't posted a selfie. I just think I feel so stupid doing it. We should post it. one after this. Oh my God. <laughs> I feel so stupid posting because I go, you already know what my face looks like. Yeah. You want to see me in a different outfit today? No. Yeah, I've never thought. I I wonder if they're gonna post another outfit. I've never I've never thought that. So I go, I feel disempowered doing this. I feel weak doing this, and frankly, I feel stupid doing this. Yeah, like I'm stupid. someone's dancing bear, and when I say someone, I'm talking, who the fuck are these people? Nobody. Mm. So so I felt really disempowered. I'm like, I don't want to do this, and so I go, okay, what is it? What is it? And you had such a beautiful reframe. Thank you. Where you're, and why don't you just share the, so, so first of all, we had to identify the problem. Yeah. Which was this. And I, I want to congratulate you and commend you and even maybe compliment you. Whoa, too far. (laughs) For holding space for me in that moment. Cause I could have just said, this is fucking stupid. I hate this. I'm not doing this. And yet I'm like, well, what is it that I dislike about this so much? And we got to the point where I was able to communicate. I feel disempowered. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm pandering for likes and comments of of which I'm not that interested in. Mm -hmm. I want to save men from sexless marriages and I want them to get laid so then they can finally step up and be the man they need to be so we can have a community of empowered men so that anybody comes and tries to fuck with us, all of us can stand up and go, Fuck you. Mm. We're not doing this. Yeah. But if a guy's pussy starved, he he doesn't feel like a man. So I just want to save everybody that's in my DMs, everybody that's watching social media, every guy in there, I want him to join our program so they can be empowered. Yeah. That's what I want. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, me doing this little thing doesn't feel like that. But it does if you reframe it. And you reframed and it. So I, I want to set the context. We got clear that. on the problem. Now I said, what if we do posts where we're giving Mm. which means giving like date tips ideas um 
all those things. Just uh, like giving them inspiration, just tips yeah. for their relationship, Serve for their them. life, serving, giving. So instead yeah. of saying like, oh, this restaurant or whatever. Well, I guess if it's a, if it's a good one, we're giving date nights. But like, so we did the hike, mm -hmm. which is something I like to do. You like to do. Yeah. Um, it's something different for a date. So that's a date tip or yeah. go to that spot. It was amazing. So if we reframe it as we're going to give a little yeah. tip for them. Then why wouldn't we be posting? But, but you instantly turn it from the, hey, do you like me? I'm searching for validation, which I think social media, a lot of people are searching for validation. Yes, That's why course. I almost consume nobody's content. Mm -hmm. And we have a team that creates a lot of our the, these types of reels and this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. But you help me reframe it like, no, dude, we're, I get a chance to serve them but stay empowered. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, you we we found that day hikes are a really cool date for us because it allows us to communicate with each other. It allows us to do something act, active and sweaty yeah. together. So you reframe it to where I could actually be empowered and not just be like, check out my breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Don't care about your breakfast. Yeah. Nobody cares about your breakfast. I don't think. Maybe people Some do. Some people do if they're trying to diet and they're like, I better eat that. That person eats that or yeah. whatever. So it just depends on what it is. But you reframed me, girl. I reframed you. And then I was talking to my best friend, Stacy, mm -hmm. and she. I said, we're trying to post more. And she's like, you seriously have to. She goes, I love watching everything you guys do. I want to see your pretty face. I want to know what you're up to. I want to see your dates. I want to get the tips, all the things. So yeah. she was saying, and it, it was really encouraging because I – care what she thinks because i love her yeah and i don't know i just want to give so the the reframe for me was really big too is because i just i do want to just give all the information i have to people yeah if i can yeah also get paid slash get paid for it yeah well people don't pay they don't pay attention you know it, this is the other thing i the the clip that just came out today that uh we collaborated with eric rock mm. i don't know if you said i said most guys there's two things that men say Two guys say that my word is the most important thing to me. Uh, or my, no, this. Okay. Let's do a clip that's actually worthy. Here we go. <laughs> Two guys. Pff, I can't even say that. Okay. Almost every man says these two things and they're totally full of shit. Number one, hmm. my word is my bond. No, it's not because most men do not actually do what they say they do when they say they're going to do it without fault. So that's a lie. Number two, my family is my most important thing. Yet they've never spent one dollar investing on how to become a better husband or dad. So you're full of shit for saying that. Those are two things that's that good. men are so full of shit on. And so the reason why I'm like I'm getting starting to get ex extremely aggressive in my DMs with people. Mm -hmm. And here's my opening line: If you get this on your in my DMs, it's because I want you to pay attention. And it's this: My opening line to you in the DMs, for you new followers, for you who like, and for you who comment on our stuff, or you slide into my DMs and, and want to talk. I like that. I'm gonna say something very simple. Number one. Are you here to get more attention from your wife or are you here just for the vids? If they're here for the vids because it's entertaining, cool. If they're here for more attention on their wife, you need to join one of our programs. Mm. Either the $200 one that we've stripped out to give you the five basic principles or the five dials. Or if you're really serious and your word is your bond and your family, everything, your family is your most important thing, then you need to join our coaching program. Mm -hmm. Other than, I'm not there to make more friends. I'm here to save men from themselves and to save their families. That's it. I like Anything it. else, I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's where I'm at. That's awesome. So our social media, the way I look at social media has 100% changed mm -hmm. because of you. Aww. And that reframe teammate. on the top. Yeah, teammate. <laughs> but you teammates. really helped me reframe that because... Of course I want to serve people. I, mm -hmm. We say stuff that nobody's saying, and we say it in a way that nobody's saying, and we say it uh, with a conviction that very few couples can actually say it with because they don't have what we have. Mm -hmm. Be like a broke person say, hey, you want to become rich? And be like, you don't know. Yeah. Very few people have the relationship that you and I have, and I want to continue to proclaim it to the world. 
about what we've got. Show them the guns. Show. show. Oh, dude, your biceps popping, girl. Thanks, Marie. Hey, yeah, we've got a. <laughs> thanks, Marie. <laughs> thanks, Marie. Hey, we've, yeah, got a, we've, got, we've got our band tees on today. Oh yeah. Remember how cute you thought I looked in this outfit? Yeah, I got you that shirt. How come you didn't tell the crowd yet how that about that? I'm just kidding. <laughs> so anything Motorhead else you want to talk about? That? Oh, oh, so we come in with negativity. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? And that the the real way to do it is to go i would love for you to yeah this would make me feel really loved if you did this me. romance me i uh, took the initiative on the kids um on cleaning on work or whatever whatever, whatever they got. it is mm -hmm. ask for it people are really afraid to ask for what they want because they feel like they're going to be judged for it how in the world could you want that yeah. or be denied mm -hmm. and rejection is really hard for people to take we, we as humans we don't like it <laughs> <laughs> apparently dogs don't like their beautiful little paws messed with either wee, wee, wee. so what a man what a man what a man what a mighty good man i think that's what i i think i think that's i think that's the show for today i love it yeah all right teammate all right wrap teammate. it up wrap it up so here's what you can do after you listen to this podcast if you're like hey i'm a man and I do want to invest in my family, and I do want to invest and become a better dad. You need to go to marriedgame.com, watch a video there, book a call with us, and we'll see if you're a good fit for our coaching program. Or simply DM me, give me the goods, and I'll send you a link where you can buy our less than $200, five main principles of Married Game. I went in and shot modules for you and the five dial system so you can understand what it is. And you can figure out what these things are. But either way... If you don't invest in yourself, then your family actually isn't the most important thing. And Boom. I stand by that. So, Boom. Also, don't be a nerd. Spread the word. Share this with somebody else that you think would uh, gain a lot of love, a lot of insight, and a lot of uh, value from it. And with that, keep crushing it. That shit's contagious. <laughs>